In the early universe, shortly after the Big Bang, the first particles that kind of crystallized out of energy and became matter were quarks and electrons. So let's talk a little bit about these crazy guys called quarks. You may not have heard of quarks. Um, they have funny names, up, down, strange, charm, top, and bottom. There are six flavors of quarks, and uh, they call them flavors as opposed to positive or negative or colors or, or something else. Um, these were discovered back in the 1970s, and it was a time when there was free love and people were very whimsical, so these particles kind of got whimsical names. Quarks are the things that make up protons and neutrons. Um, each proton and neutron is not, it not a fundamental particle. Each one of these is made out of three quarks um, and different combination of quarks. And when these quarks combine in different ways, they make other particles. Now, in the early universe, there was normal matter that was produced. There was also antimatter. What's the difference between normal matter and antimatter? Normal matter is the matter that makes up you, me, dogs, cats, and Doritos. Um, positive protons, negative electrons. Antimatter is made of negative protons and positive electrons. They're exactly the same size. They're exactly the same shape. They have exactly the same properties, except for the fact that they have opposite charge. So that is matter and antimatter. And in the early universe, both were produced. How do we know that antimatter is not just something that scientists made up? Um, we actually have found these in particle accelerators. Particle accelerators produce protons and antiprotons when they smash atoms together and all this stuff that flies out. That's where we first discovered protons, antiprotons, and positrons. So in the beginning, um, these quarks and antiquarks combine to make protons, neutrons, antiprotons, and antineutrons. And here's a little picture. Two ups and a down make a proton, and an up and two down quarks actually make a neutron. So those were equally made, pro, um, matter and antimatter, in that early universe. Now, at about time is 10 to the negative 6 seconds after the Big Bang. The math predicts, and then experimental results also reinforce this idea, that there was a slight unbalanced amount of matter and antimatter to the amount of about one part per 10 billion. So if you've got 10 billion particles, there happens to be a slight favoring for normal matter versus antimatter. So for every 10 billion protons, there were 10 billion and one positively charged protons for every 10 billion negatively charged protons. And in the early universe, that means there was a little bit of lack of symmetry, asymmetry. Now, if you have matter and antimatter and those two collide, what happens is that the matter and the antimatter will actually annihilate each other and transform back from being mass back into being pure energy in the forms of heat and light. Now, if you watch a lot of science fiction, um, periodically they make up things about antimatter bombs and all sorts of different things. It's very hard to accumulate very much antimatter. It's hard to store it because if it touches regular matter, like a proton and an antiproton, if those two should hit, they would kind of burst into a little tiny mini explosion and give off an awful lot of radiation. But experiments have indicated that there is a preference in our universe. Our universe was tuned, it was written, it was produced with a preference for normal matter over antimatter. And so because of this annihilation of most of the antimatter that existed in the beginning, our universe contains positive protons and negative electrons. Um, some people hypothesize there might still be pockets 
of antimatter out in the universe, there have been people who've looked for it and we haven't found any of it yet. But I mean, we're talking like antimatter galaxies out there and there's not a lot of proof they exist yet, but who knows? Okay, that's going to end this one, and then we'll come back next time and continue with the story of the Big Bang.